Welcome to a new module in 61C. In this module, we'll design a RISC-V processor. That's my favorite part of the entire course, because it will really help us connect the software story with the hardware story that we've been telling. So let's get into it. But first, let's recap where do we stand. 61C is centered around the instruction set architecture which is the part that se separates and joins together the software and the hardware. Early in the class, we have spotlighted the higher level language, which was C, and the RISC-V assembly language. Assembly language compiles to the machine code, and any hardware that implements that same RISC-V ISA should be able to execute any RISC-V binary machine code. So that's great. We are going to see now how do we build hardware that actually executes RISC-V code. And keep in mind, there may be many different variations of that hardware, but they all have to execute that code. So we have seen how we build uh, digital systems out of logic gates based on Boolean equations. So what we'll do now, we'll zoom in on the design of a data path and control that put together, when put together, comprise a microprocessor. This picture of, of uh, machine structures still applies, but we like to look at the world now in a more 21st century kind of way. In the new school of machine structures, we emphasize parallelism, and we have seen that things can be parallelized in many ways in higher levels. But keep in mind that at a very low level, hardware descriptions are inherently parallel. All the gates switch together and operate in, in, with a very high degree of parallelism. What we'll find out that that those functional units that are built out of these gates also operate in parallel. And then we can have multiple functional units that can execute multiple instructions in parallel. So we'll be emphasizing this level of concurrency and parallelism throughout the, our story of describing the hardware. One more reminder, Remember our very important picture about the layers of abstraction. We have started with the C as an example of a high-level language. Then we talked about the assembly language and um, described the machine language or machine code that RISC-V executes. And I've mentioned this already in this intro and mentioned this before. There can be many implementations of the RISC-V ISA but they all have to execute that binary code. So on the bottom, out of the gates that we have learned so far, we can put different implementations of RISC-V processors, but they should all be able to execute the same binary. So we are going to guide you through a design of one particular data path and control associated control but we are going to see that there can be many variants of that. Remember our microprocessor so far. We have only talked about single core microprocessor, but we can have multiple cores that can operate in parallel. In our single core microprocessor model, we had the processor on the left, memory in the middle, and input and the output connected to it. Inside the processor, there are two main parts. We haven't talked really much about them, although we got some picture about what they do. There is a control and there is a data path. Inside our data path, we have found registers and a special one, uh, which was the program counter, and the arithmetic logic unit as the most common functional unit that we use. There may be other functional units, but we are going to focus on the ALU for now. So, inside the microprocessor, or the CPU, 
um, or CPU stands for Essential Processing Unit, there are two main components. And again, CPU is this active part of a computer where the main action happens. There are two main parts in it, which are the data path and the control. The data path, sometimes we may call it the brawn of the processor, is the portion of a processor that has necessary hardware to execute all the instructions that we have in the ISA. Now, there is one important point that I would like to make here. We can build a separate data path for every instruction. We have seen 30 something instructions so far in RISC-V integer base subset, but we don't build a separate data path for each instruction. We build one data path that executes many instructions, or in our case, all RV32I instructions. The data path can be configured to optimally execute every single one of these instructions. So the role of the control or the brain of the microprocessor is to control the data path or tell the data path how to set itself such that it executes each instruction correctly. What we have seen so far is this subset of instructions that comprise the RV32i or the integer part of the base um, instruction set for a 32-bit variant of RISC-V. That is enough to, to, to allow us to write any C code. So what we are going to do now, we are going to go through different types of instructions and build the data path and the associated control that is needed to execute them. In the end, when we complete this journey, we could build a processor like this RISC-V processor that can run any assembly or any C code that we can write. That's quite exciting. We're going to get into that just after the break. <laughs>